Mm-hmm. All right, so Aram is joining us, um, and I, I just want to talk to him about one specific subject, and I think we all know what it is. The MILB home run leader this year. I wrote an article about him last week, Griffin Cohen. Yeah, you did a great job. Great, man. dude. I appreciate that. Teammates in high school, you are the biggest advocate for this guy. I'll let you have the floor right now. We've talked about him a little bit on this podcast, but I'll let you have the floor right now. Why yeah. should we not be concerned about the strikeout rate? <laughs> Just tell us right now. Um, no, well, well, I'll start with this. You know, like it's funny when he first came over to the Marlins, I, I tried to just kind of lay in the weeds. I was like, I'm just not going to talk about it too much and uh, and try to be as objective as possible. But then people were asking me on you know, my prospect ranking and stuff like that. I was like, where the hell am I going to put Griff? If I put Griff 15, he's going to text me and say, what the hell? If I put him like just to mess with me. But if I, if I put him too high, people are going to say you're biased. So it's like. It, it was one of those weird situations. So I, I just realized, you know what, like just own the fact that he's your friend and people are going to know that anything you say about him is going to be a little bit biased. That being said, what I can attest to that I think maybe some others can't is that I can attest to his work ethic, his character and his makeup. And, you know, there's a reason why I, he's one of my closest friends is that he is just well put together and he really has all of the intangibles you look for in a ball player. A lot of times that comes from, players whose fathers played in the big leagues, right? And Jeff Mm -hmm. is the same way and was the same way as why he played for 17 years with the strikeout rate. Look, I I, I think with Griff, it's more so feeling out how he's going to get pitched to because he doesn't see a lot of strikes. I mean, I I watch a lot of the ABs, of course, like you said, I'm his biggest supporter and and, in high A, he was pitched to totally differently than now in double A, they're attacking him a bit more, but the way they attack him is different. So now he's feeling that out. And it felt like he was just really feeling the, he always had the power, but he was starting to get the consistency in terms of like, okay, this is my approach in high A. He gets to double A. And you know what he kind of said to me was, instead of pitching to your, or to their strengths, the pitchers, they pitch to your weaknesses more. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening in double A. And I think you see it with a lot of players. Uh, I just interviewed Greg Jones today uh, of, of the Rays. And, you know, he was telling me, yeah, it's not been the start I wanted in double A, but I really feel like I'm seeing it well. I feel like I'm doing well, but it's just not coming together yet in terms of the numbers. I think he's always going to strike out, right? But like, mm-hmm. why can't Griffin become the Joey Gallo type of profile? I think he actually might not even strike out that much. Look at the swing. I don't see that much length. To me, it's more about approach, pitch selection, and almost overthinking at the plate sometimes because he's so used to being pitched around since we were in high school. I mean, there were some times I hit behind him, and they would walk him and I would just, I'd be like, sorry, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. And I just try to get a hit, but like, it, it was like annoying, you know, like it was just one of those things that he's had to deal with forever. And now he's getting attacked more. And I think it's a, it's a new adjustment. Third, uh, Joey Gallo, I'm looking at the numbers now, you know, you talk about a comparison to him, 34 and a half percent strikeout rate. I, who would have thought that that kind of strikeout rate would be sustainable in the big leagues to where you can be considered a really good player, 129 way to run straight to plus 3.7 war. Obviously he's a great defender, Joey Gallo, um, you know, and he, he, he puts it all together, man, 831 OPS, you know, 19.2% walk rate. So it can work. But, you know, there, there it is the 40 percent is a little, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's not me, going to fly. But, yeah, yeah, that's not going to fly. But, you know, I talked to, you know, when I talked to him for, for this interview and he has actually cut it down, he's under 42 percent now um, and, and you know, 99 way to run straight up plus despite only hitting 184 because he's yeah. got 11 home runs and. 30 games in in double a but you know when i talked to him he was very clear about what he needs to do right he knew what he needed to do to cut the strikeouts down because he obviously said to me that's the biggest improvement you know i need to make i can't ah, say he, he told me not to say it because he was like don't give it away to opposing pitchers obviously you know so i'm gonna kind of keep that a secret here but you know he, he knows what he has to do and oh, obviously yeah. he's got you know jeff and he when i talked to him he was like ultimate old school work hard you know, grind it out guy, right? Think about Jeff Conine, you know, just, he talked about how he just kind of stood there in the box and just kind of had the bat on his shoulder. Nothing really, you know, he, he did flashy nothing. About him, he, just, but he just swung. It was, he it was, just unbe- swung he and it, it, he it was moved. great, but, um, you know, it obviously for Griff, I think everybody here, you know, hope it hopes it works out. Certainly me after I talked to him and Alex, yeah. you know, for, for, people at home that might be watching we've talked touched on him a little bit and you know and and a lot of people probably know he's the milb home run leader but talk to us a little bit about his profile kind of you know what you see going forward 
No, yeah, I think I think Aram said it the best um, with what he just said. Um, and Griffin kind of told us he did a post game uh, media Zoom call with the Wahoos, and I basically asked him, "Hey, you know, like you know, the strike." I I didn't want to go straight to the strikeouts because, of course, that's what everybody's going to hammer him for because that's his weakness. So I just I I kind of tried to phrase it a little different and just be like, you know, what what have you seen different here in Double A versus Single A Advanced? And he basically just said exactly what Aram said, that pitchers are noticing weaknesses and they're going to hammer it. So if you show them a weakness, they're going to hammer that weakness. So just closing holes and really not getting out in front is his main thing. And I think that's exactly what he needs to do to cut down on the strikeouts is not commit too early because, as Aram said, the swing is good. Um, You know, it's obviously built for power. He just really needs to pitch select. He needs to notice pitches a little bit better. He just needs to work it out, man. Um, he got a big promotion to double A, you know, no freaking out yet. You want to see the walks come up. You want to see the strikeouts go down. But, man, even if he becomes like a 250, 245, 250 hitter with that power, it's definitely doable. So, yeah, and, it's, it, it's not a long way to go, but he does have some improvements to make to fill out for sure. Yeah, and one thing I want to say on that too is, is I think you bring up a really good point. Um, and even just like removing myself from just knowing it, you know, the personal situation – you look at somebody like Griffin. Yeah, he's he's 24 years old, but in terms of the experience, right? He misses 50 games due to the the uh, riddle and suspension. Then he misses the 2020 season, so he's disproportionately affected than you know some of the other players. He only played half of a season in 2019, hit 22 jacks, and led the league in home runs. He struck out a bit, but he finished the season strong, not paying. And then he doesn't get to really parlay that into 2020. Misses the season, then gets settled in in high A, and now he makes the big jump to double A. So I think it's going to be a feel-out period. He's going to be one of those guys, I think, that you feel it out, you struggle a little bit in double A, then you get the promotion, or you play again in double A next year, and you have a good idea of what you were expecting, almost like a rookie that gets a September call-up. The last thing I'll say, too, is his lefty-righty splits are consistent, which is a Mm -hmm. really good sign in terms of the Ks. He hits lefties, and you just saw the video that we put up here that, that Eli put up, like, He goes out to all fields. You texted me, uh, Ethan, like, do you have the spray charts? And I was like, no, I wish because I always try to find it because it's it's foul pull to foul pull. So the swing plays, it's really like like Alex said, it's pitch selection, it's pitch rec. And I think that's something you just get after at bats, at bats, at bats. And I think for him, it's just reps to wrap it up there. But uh, again, you did a great job on that PC that I had had a blast reading it because obviously – I know a ton about him, but I still felt like I was I was getting a new angle. So uh, I hell of a that. job there, and uh, I Thank plugged you. that on on the podcast as well. Thank you, I so appreciate that. Yeah, it was fun to write. Up. Go ahead. One more thing yeah, go ahead, Alex. Before you move on, because I know you got to go on, but um, hmm. just in terms of you asked me as well, our, our chat as well. I think you asked, hey, does he have a spray chart? I was like, I you know, I wish that existed because that would be awesome to see, because he really is going to all fields, as Aram just said. But another thing that he was asked, I think that I asked him on that same media call was about going oppo more because he's going oppo like 42 percent of the time this year yep and that's something he's mm-hmm. never really done in double a yes that's something he's never really done i mean not even in single a advance is only 30 percent, and then before that 30 percent, 30 percent, and then 16 percent to start his career so it's just something that he's never done but he basically said that that's where his swing works the best that's where he's most most comfortable aiming for um so yeah i mean that's huge i mean obviously you have the huge raw power but the fact that he's so comfortable going to that part of the field i think is really big and that he can not even if he doesn't go over the fence, if he hits that gap more often, you know, that's that's huge. And it's going to be tough for guys to uh, to set up defenses against him, especially in the outfield, because he can go to every single field. So really like him, man. I, I think uh, everything you wrote in your article, Ethan, which, again, I agree was amazing. Very good. Um, great time reading that. And he's, he's a great kid, dude. Um, one more thing I'll say. Great kid. Really quiet in high school. I interviewed him a couple of times in high school. He was really quiet. Aram could probably tell you that. You know, obviously they're not coached on how to interview with people in high school, but kind of a quieter kid. But, you know, now that he's now that he's up, he's he's coming a personality. And I really like him as a person and especially as a player. So I think he's going to be really good. I want to wrap up this discussion with Griffin before and then move into the next, um, you know, to previewing this series with this comment in the chat. Eli, if you can put it up there, uh, if he hits 40 home runs, who cares about his average and how many times he strikes out? That's kind of the major leagues today. So I kind of think, you know, that's perfect in terms of, you know, the Marlins really need power, and it's one of the reasons that they were so keen on acquiring Griffin um, when they did, you know, and they did it for Jonathan VR, who was on the way out anyway. And, uh, you know, we all love Jonathan VR on the stream. I know that. So uh, it was it was just a great deal, and he's a good kid, and it was really fun to write that piece. And, um, Aram, I'm glad you got to come on to talk 